So today I'm going to be doing away with this, as you've seen in all my videos, my MT3 ER32 collet chuck. It's been pretty good and I've used it in conjunction with my knockoff TTS tooling and I've just used the 19 to 20 mil collet and been able to change tools in and out without taking the collet out of the ER32 collet chuck. And that's been great, although it's had a few drawbacks, namely being there's more run out having two collets to hold the tool and less rigidity with all the extra stick out. So what I've gone and done is purchase this Tormark MT3 collet. This goes directly into the spindle on the mill and holds the TTS tool holder nice and tight. You place a drawbar on here, and as it's snugged up into the spindle, it clamps on the tool. So I like this system because it also adds extra rigidity when this piece here snugs up against the nose of the spindle. And it also allows you to set all your tool heights offline as these measurements are repeatable, as this, this, when this is hard up against the spindle nose, this distance from the tip of the cutting tool to here does not change. Now, for me to be able to utilize this, I need to make myself a new drawbar. So that's what we'll be doing today as my half inch BSW drawbar only fits the ER32 collet chuck and I need a 3 8 by 16 TPI thread to draw this up into the mill. Once the thread of rob was cut, it was time to take it over to the lathe. From there, I would face the thread of rod and then center drill it so I could turn down the diameter. And to avoid getting any serious deflection, I made sure to make relatively light cuts at about a quarter of a mil depth per cut. And on a side note, this stainless was awesome to machine and gave an epic surface finish. 
Now, the drawbar is made from M16 threaded rod, and it needs an 18mm shoulder. This is going to require me to do some additive manufacturing, namely with the MIG welder. I would also need to drill out this M12 stainless steel nut to the same diameter as the top of the drawbar and then weld it on to the top. But, before welding on the nut, I would need to place on this collar. This is threaded onto the top of the spindle and allows me to remove the collets without the persuasion of a hammer on top of the drawbar. What I'm doing here is removing about a mil and a half of material off the end of the drawbar to get rid of all the warp from the MIG welding. Now, you're probably asking yourself, what is happening here? Why is he not using a 38 by 16 die nut? And the answer to that is, it's a long weekend and all the stores are closed and I wanted to get this done. So, despite my inner laziness, I decided to turn the thread on the lathe. Once I had finished with the lathe, I made my way over to the bench grinder, which is handily propped up on the drill press. I then proceeded to grind a slight taper on the first thread, and then from there I used the wire wheel to clean out all the threads. Back to the lathe again, and this time I'm machining the nut on top of the drawbar to remove the weld profile and possibly improve the balance. When all the machining was done, there was still a minute crater in the top of the drawbar, although I don't think this warranted getting out the welder and fixing it up. So here's the new drawbar with the collet attached, and for comparison, I have the original half-inch BSW drawbar with the MT3 collet chuck attached. Obviously stainless wasn't the best choice as the tensile strength was unknown, but 
being MT3, it doesn't need to be tightened up that tight, and I'll see how it goes. Although, if I have to remake it, I will definitely be using a high tensile stainless or a grade 8.8 .8 threaded rod. So, to test this out, first things first, I'm going to apply. A very light smear of anti-seize on the threads, seeing as they're stainless steel and I don't want them binding up. So from there, drop it down through the spindle and I'll take my MT3 collet. and place it up in the spindle. Also, from there, I just tighten this down by hand. And better yet, I can place my tool in there. Put my rattle gun on there. Gently tighten it up, and then from there, set my torque wrench to twenty newton meters. Grab the flats on the spindle nose, This is all tightened up, 20 newton meters, should be pulled in there nice and tight. And then when I want to remove the tool, all I have to do is wind down the little collar up on top of the spindle. Check that on the rattle gun. Hold the tool. There you go. And tool pops out. Now, if I was more blase, I could just tighten it with the rattle gun. But I do like the idea of using the torque wrench so I don't bust my tiny little 3 8 by 16 thread. And hopefully, I don't have to make another drawbar for quite a wee while.